This is not a test. This is an emergency broadcast transmission. I was in charge, I was the Minister of Defense Coordinator. My job was to man, train, and equip the Iraqi army in Al-Anbar, Najaf, Karbala, and northern Bukhila provinces. And I can tell you right now, well, somebody had the great idea to get rid of the Iraqi army, so when we rebuilt it, we did everything we could to make it as strong as possible. And I'll tell you right now, Homeland Security would kick their butts in a week. What's happening here is we're building a domestic military because it's unlawful or unconstitutional to use American troops on American soil. So what we're doing is we're building a military. My best friend, who's a SWAT officer in Nashua, who came to Iraq with me to train the Iraqi police, sent me an email with a picture of him in the media on the streets of Watertown, Mass, wearing the exact same combat gear that we had in Iraq, only it was a different color. And what, the way we do things in the military is called task organization. You take a command, and then you attach units to it in order to accomplish the mission. What's happening is Homeland Security is pre-staging gear, equipment, consistent. What they're trying to do is use standardized vehicles, standardized equipment. I saw a picture in the Boston Globe during the marathon bombing where there was a state police officer. Actually, there were two officers. They both had identical helmets, flak jackets, weapons, everything I wore in Iraq, only it was all blue. The officer on one side had a big patch on his back that said Massachusetts State Police. Another officer next to him, his patch said Boston Police. And so what we're doing here, and let's not kid about it, we're building a domestic army and we're shrinking the military because the government is afraid of its own citizens. The last time more than 10 terrorists were in the same place at one time was September 11th, and all these vehicles in the world wouldn't have prevented it, nor would it have helped anybody. So I don't know where we're going to use this many vehicles and this many troops. Concord is just one little cog in the wheel. We're building an army over here, and I can't believe that people aren't seeing it. Is everybody blind? That's all I'll say. One of the things that, that, that I think is important, and you and I discussed earlier today, was you know, one of the things we can do so for, you know, is, is not only you know, limiting state employees in terms of how they try to, or preventing them from trying to enforce aspects of this, but also, you know, for example, the, uh, the forced home inspections that, we've, that, that I've heard about, but also... It knows the truth, by the way. Yes. Do you think this, this amendment that, that you helped us draft today would prevent state employees from doing the types of things, home proposed forced home inspections, but also limit local governments from trying to end run what we have done so far in the legislature. FEMA and DHS signed a contract with Russia to send troops here in the event of an emergency. It's no big secret, but we have new information on what they're doing here. They are buying nearly 600,000 AK 762 by 39 millimeter caliber rifle magazines, 2 million rounds to, to be delivered to Camp Stanley in Texas of the same caliber. You also have a little over a half a million going to the Bluegrass Army Depot. And you also have 9x18s that have been purchased. On top of that, people are like, well, what about the weapons? They are taking anywhere between 200 and 286 Kalashnikov AK-74 assault rifles. I have received a possible emergency FEMA Region 3 alert. FEMA Region 3 consists of Washington, D.C., Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and West Virginia. This alert was sent to us by Senator Sheldon R. Songstadt, retired of South Dakota State. This is Rev. Michelle Hopkins. Well, here is what the Senator's National Preparedness Research turned up. 
FEMA purchase orders for over 14.2 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders for 2 million pouches of emergency water to be delivered to FEMA Region 3 by October 1st. FEMA purchase orders for $13.6 million for MREs and heater meals to be delivered to Austin by October 1st. Nine-week training course for UN peacekeepers in CONUS to learn urban warfare. They're learning urban warfare and they need to learn English and U.S. weapons systems. We're having foreign soldiers learn our U.S. weapons systems. This has been going on since the fourth week of July for 386,000 troops to be completed by October 1st. 2,800 MRAPs must be delivered to DHS by October 1st. No leave will be allowed for U.S. military from September 28th through November 5th. NORCOM yearly training for civil unrest is to be suspended until September 27th to be performed in northeast coastal areas. Date for release of QE3 report is to be moved to October 16th. All DHS agents must qualify with sidearm, shotgun, and AR-15 by September 28th. No mention of yearly less lethal qualification. The sporadic testing of GPS and communication satellites is coordinated for the very first time ever with a testing date of September 29th. POTUS mandates to FEMA and DHS concerning support for metropolitan communities dealing with the extreme climate change must be complete by October 1st. These mandates were issued during the last three weeks. Over 300 school systems in the U.S. have determined their three-day kits for each school and three-day kits for each student to take with them. All deliveries are scheduled for the month of September. All National Guard units will complete riot control and disaster assistance training during this year's annual two-week training. All units must have their training complete by September 30th. Daily testing of emergency broadcast system to begin on September 25th and run through October 2nd. Eastern-based Coast Guard units to perform massive group training, usually performed in the Gulf, in the Virginia and Delaware areas. This is a 10-day training mission to begin September 26th. God, please help America. Sheldon R. Songstat, Senator Retired, South Dakota State. Right now, the cops are banging at the door. It's about 1.30 in the morning. They're still banging on the door. I told them over and over again they're at the wrong address. They keep yelling out 4663, and that is the wrong address. They are not at the right place. And they will not stop. They have not told me what they're here for. They've been banging on my door since 1.30 a.m. It's now 2 o'clock a.m. They have still not told me what they're here for, and they're threatening to break into my home. I it's harassment. I haven't done anything. Sir, we're opening the door. Please stop. We're opening the door. Please stop. Okay, please stop. You're being you're being filmed. Please stop. Please stop. You're being you're all on camera. Please stop. We will open the door. We will open the door. We will open the door. Just stop. Who's the supervisor? Lord, please. Lord, please. I rebuke Satan back to the depths of hell from whence he came. I rebuke Satan back to the depths of hell from whence he came. Mm -hmm. I haven't done anything. I haven't done anything. 
Oh, I'm a Christian woman. What are you doing? What are you doing? I am in my apartment, sir. Go back inside right now. I am inside. I'm, this is my door. I'm standing right inside my apartment. Sir, I'm inside my apartment. <laughs> 